Good afternoon, viewers. Got a quick bulletin for you folks and some exclusive footage of the ongoing testing here at the Saxavord Spaceport. RFA1 conducted a wet dress rehearsal for their upcoming static fire, tanking up the rocket least to some degree. I'm not sure if they carried out a full tanking. It doesn't appear that that's what happened. But once again, we need to remember that if you compare the types of things that we are seeing with this rocket to the types of tank watching that people do with Starship or, for example, with SLS or even the Space Shuttle, you're going to see a lot of differences because this rocket makes use of liquid oxygen and RP-1 and the operating temperature of RP-1 is very different than hydrogen or methane. But the one feature that's always going to look the same when you're talking about any sort of tanking test is the moment when the liquid oxygen comes billowing out from underneath the rocket as happened last night. Truly an amazing sight to see, uh, something that I had been waiting for for quite some time. I think a lot of people had been waiting, everybody who was watching the test, which by the way included a number of RFA employees scattered about the site and it was a remarkable thing to see indeed and also of course you can see the chill line growing on the rocket as the fueling up procedure continued but as near as I was able to ascertain the test went as planned and everything that needed to be accomplished was accomplished in preparation for a static fire that's going to be happening very very soon I'll be bringing you coverage of that not sure sure if it's going to be live coverage yet or not. I found that I can actually get much better quality imagery if I release the footage after the fact because I'm not having to stream it so I can get better camera footage that way. We'll see how things go and I will let you know how all of that is developing. And let's go ahead and talk about the capabilities of this rocket again for those of you who are unfamiliar. This is a rocket that is a significant step up from all all other small launchers like for example the rocket lab electron it is of course a bigger rocket it stands about 30 meters tall it can carry up to 1.3 metric tons of payload up to a 500 kilometer sun synchronous orbit 850 kilograms to a 2000 kilometer polar orbit 500 kilograms to a 6,000 kilometer MEO orbit. Then you have 450 kilograms to a geosynchronous transfer orbit. 300 kilograms to lunar transfer orbit. So that's actually more than I was reporting before. 300 kilograms or about 660 pounds for those Americans out there who are watching this broadcast. That's a substantial amount going all the way to the moon. It is indeed actually the same payload that Rocket Lab delivers to low Earth orbit. So this is a big, big increase in capability for this rocket over other small launchers, kind of falling into the same category as perhaps the Firefly rockets and some of the others that are being tested, but still the theoretical payload of this one is even a bit bigger than the Firefly solution. So yeah, very impressive stuff. And by the way, as I mentioned before, one of the things that makes this rocket's payload capabilities possible is its third stage, the Redshift OTV or orbital transfer vehicle that has an additional two and a half kilometers per second worth of delta v which is one of the things that allows this rocket to deploy such considerable payloads all the way up to sun synchronous orbits as opposed to low earth orbit and of course this is a stage that's capable of some secondary missions after the fact such as deorbiting space junk a little bit of satellite maintenance those sorts of things and and that is a fully operational stage that's been thoroughly tested. It went through the last of its tests recently and will be delivered to this facility very soon when they're ready to stack the rocket. But first, we have a series of static fires, a five engine and a nine engine, both of which are coming up very soon. I hope to bring you coverage of both of these events. And then a launch 
is projected sometime in September or perhaps early October, and that is more of a regulatory issue than a technological issue. RFA has told me that their rocket should be fully stacked and ready to lift off by the end of August, but they are a brand new launch provider, not proven yet, as opposed to, say, if a proven launch provider were to come up here like Rocket Lab or something, the CAA would probably give them permission a little bit quicker because they have an established history of successful launches, but still, I am confident that RFA is going to get everything they need license-wise by September or early October at the latest, and we should be ready to move forward then. So we are getting very close to a historic event. I am extremely impressed with everything this company is doing up here. I'm impressed with their personnel. I'm impressed with the technology, and I really think these guys are going to make a big splash in the European market. Please stay tuned. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, please subscribe, check the description for various ways to support this content so I can keep bringing it to you. And as always, stay angry about space.